Okay. Okay, so thank you for inviting me here and uh, also giving the connection of another research focus within Cliver, which is called the consistency between planetary energy balance and ocean heat storage. And um, I, will, I will give you an introduction on the general idea and also to have the opportunity later on doing and also on the end of this week in order to discuss uh, what can be uh, put together. So, um, under an equilibrium climate, the amount of incoming and outcoming energy is balanced and uh, the Earth energy budget is, uh, is uh, under balanced conditions. And if there's any climate forcing, um, there, um, this uh, energy balance will be not in balance anymore, so there will be a positive or negative Earth energy imbalance. And under the current climate change conditions, we measure a positive Earth energy imbalance of the amount of 0.5 to 1 watt per meter square. And uh, this uh, accumula accumulated uh, energy in the climate system is, uh, is uh, stored by the, Earth's, uh, by the Earth's surface, and the majority of this energy is stored within the global oceans. So uh, there are different symptoms of this accumulation of energy in the climate system and this differentiating between source and symptoms will also our argumentations uh, why we see, for example, the measure of global surface temperature is not the one which might be the most uh, robust <coughs> one for um, um, uh, discussing climate variability and uh, climate change issues. So the symptoms of these accumulated energies include, for example, the rise of global surface temperature, also the rise in ocean heat content, or the rise in sea level, and so on. There are different uh, aspects here from where you're all aware of. And uh, so how we can measure this Earth energy imbalance? For actually, there are different methods in uh, describing this uh, or estimating this. Um, and there's first the radiation at the top of the atmosphere by a system of uh, satellites. There's the surface fluxes, which is the sum of the different uh, fluxes uh, within the, uh, of the surface energy budget. And there's the part of the energy which is stored in the climate system, predominantly by the ocean heat content estimate, and also by the hint cast, for example, the ocean and uh, atmospheric reanalysis and the climate protections. So I will just give some insight on results uh, for, sorry, for the radiation at the top and the, and the ocean inventory. And um, there's a comparison here of time series from Ceres. This is a system of satellites which gives you the radiation from the top of the atmosphere directly, the net flux and the comparison with ocean heat content estimates from different groups. And you can clearly see the result here and why we have created one of those groups is that there are still large discrepancies in these estimates, although they should give up the same result. And in particular, also, if you look for the different heat content estimates, that you have still different results. So the top of the atmosphere should more or less match the result for ocean heat content, and there are still issues where we call this term of missing energy in the climate system. And another point is that we are first uh, currently estimations in the range of, uh, which is also marked in the last IPCC between 0 0.5 and 1 watt per meter square, and which is still not yet precise enough in terms of resolving all the issues for climate forcing, for example, also the volcanics. So this is the result for the storage part for the ocean heat content estimate. This is the time series for different depth layers from an ocean reanalysis system. And uh, I just ha wanted to highlight here the problematics shortly that you have a kind of differentiating between the measurements for the historical measurements period, uh, which has a large development in terms of uh, sampling within the ocean and from uh, really limited terms of, of system of technologies. And there was a huge increase with a, the with a new, uh, let's say, modern obs global obs ocean observing system, which in, has increased in particular with the Argo observing system, and hence a large increase in the sampling of, of the global ocean. So, 
But still, so this is the result. If you see here the result between the sampling before, these are the estimates directly from ocean heat content from different groups. You can see that there are large differences be between those estimates. I do not have time to go into detail here why are there. But of course, the one of the largest regions is the sampling issue. And uh, you can see, you see the improvement here if you go to the area era of Argu where we have a more complete observing system. But if you have a focus on the area of the focus uh, on the Argo error, you can clearly see that there are still also large issues which are not in the position that we need for observing climate variability and climate change. So I just summarize here, I do not have time to go to the other issues, but uh, we, we have summarized here in one paper uh, which we have uh, developed under this uh, research focus. And we define here that we need a, uh, a precision of 0 0.1 per, per meter square multi-tool decay time scales and 0 0.5 on sub-annual to inter-annual time scales. We can say that the system of satellite observation at the top of the atmosphere is the most precise for the, describing the uh, changes in time. The most precise one and with the most biggest future we could have is the estimate of ocean heat content for the absolute measure of Earth energy imbalance, but still there are issues to be solved. There are large still uncertainties, but uh, there will be, I will show, uh, the, the new way would be to go to the regional budget constraint for the surface budget, and that we have uh, the tool of climate models and reanalysis systems to get more insight in the processes and have the connection then here with the climate variability. So still again, there are large uncertainties. Then there's a long accounting where the heat is going. And of course, that we have to improve our knowledge on the observational capability and to, to bring the communities together in order to improve the, the things we have already and that we can forward. So the, the goal then finally of or the biggest objective of concept heat is that you create a synergy community which is all concerned with the flow of energy through the climate system. And these include consist, uh, of, um, communities for the atmospheric radiation, ocean heat content, earth surface fluxes, climate variability and change, data assimilation, operational services, the climate projection and the global sea level. So going to all the climate observation and tools for the remote sensing, in situ data, reanalysis system and numerical models, so including the climate model systems. So the um, main uh, big issues is to, co to concentrate on the Earth energy imbalance, the ocean heat budget and the atmosphere ocean turbulent and relative fluxes the observational uncertainties and the variability for a range of time and space scales, and to analyze the consistency between the satellite-based planetary heat balance and ocean heat storage estimate by using the different products and the different data on climate and tools. We have already defined within the community uh, different key questions which would guide our activities. These include what is the magnitude and the uncertainties of our estimates of the Earth's energy imbalance and how does it vary over time? Can consistency between planetary heat balance and ocean heat storage achieved and what are the major limitations? How, can, uh, how are to a top of the atmosphere net radiation and ocean heating rate distributed in space and time? I think it's one of the big issues which might also be in cross-cutting with, with this uh, research focus here. How can we improve validation requirements for and from coupled climate models to improve estimates of the Earth's energy imbalance? And how can we better constrain the surface energy fluxes and their spatial temporal variations at regional scales? So we had already some activities. There was one uh, climate work, uh, joint ESA climate workshop uh, in 2013. We had predominantly going out to the concept of cages. I'm sorry, this was one of my first workshops to be organized. I forgot to make a picture, so don't miss a picture today. And uh, the outcome of this workshop was, uh, is a project which is still ongoing. It's the uh, Ocean Heat Flux, there's an error, sorry, Heat Flux project. Then uh, we had another um, smaller project, which was the creation of an international working group at the International Space Science Institute. 
and uh, the outcome was uh, a prospective paper, which is now a sector in nature climate change, on the consistency of educated observing systems, monitoring the annual flows in the Earth system, predominantly uh, nominating that the Earth energy imbalance is one uh, the most practical way in um, uh, metric in um, in uh, estimating climate variability and climate change. Oops. Okay. Then we had very good discussions during the Pan Cliver meeting, especially there was a breakout session in July 2014, and we had several site discussions and smaller groups, which was really effective. I would have liked to have several pictures of those. The development of key scientific questions was one of the outcomes and the basis for the development of the concept white paper, which you can find on, online on our web page. Then we had uh, just one month ago another workshop. This was the first concept heat workshop and um, took place at the mid office in Exeter. And I've tried to summarize quickly more or less the outcomes of this workshop. So again, we are coming to the earth energy imbalance as the fundamental metric or the central of this research focus. There are findings going to that you have to estimate earth energy imbalance more locally to also to put the communities together because with those budget applications in terms of uh, in inferring this from different methods through physical budget constraints to the top of the atmosphere flux and atmospheric energy transport, ocean transport, divergence, and changes in ocean heat content, and directly computing the RC fluxes, uh, this would uh, bring <coughs> new insights and push the communities together. The other point is, oh, sorry, to uh, go the estimation of ocean heat content plays a key role of climate science because it's the most practical way in terms of estimating the absolute value for the Earth energy imbalance. But as you have seen, there are still some issues to be solved to improve the ocean, current ocean observing system and also to improve the estimates of, uh, of the capacity from the observing system. And uh, to go to the studies of energy flows in the climate models, modes, sorry. So which is uh, also one cross cutting point with this activity here is to go to the vertical disposition of heat in the ocean and the horizontal redistribution of heat in the ocean in climate modes. Also the hiatus, but also Pacific decadal oscillation and so on. And uh, one of our big results is that we, will, we are about to develop a recommendation letters, several recommendation letters to different research and operation institutions. And we are working on a web page. Currently, our web page is integrated with Sin Cliver, but it should become a cross cutting point uh, for, for the different communities, for the summer schools, and for uh, starting to conference sessions. So um, I'm already in the end now. Um, I just would like coming back uh, the same figure as shown by Yuna Shan this morning. And again, to show here that uh, this is implemented in, in the Cliver, um, in the Cliver um, organization. And also that it has its very cross-cutting issues. And to go to, to the connection between those two is, I think, uh, different talks, for example, have shown this morning that there is a need of, uh, of, of having more precise metrics for climate variability and change studies. So we propose here the Earth energy imbalance and we propose here a multidisciplinary community behind this to give, uh, to give those uh, uh, studies and information and expertise exchange. And uh, I think there are, sorry, there are, there are several uh, common, common lines within this uh, research focus and it's good to have this connection here and the discussion during the workshop. Thank you very much. <laughs>